In this lesson, we'll be using Adobe Photoshop to produce a theatrical poster that promotes our one-act play. Now, you'll notice in this particular example that a lot of the required elements that were stipulated in the outline are present here. You um, have Mr. Stone here, who's made a deal with the devil, and the devil has him hanging uh, by strings like a puppet uh, as he's going to control his soul. Uh, which is about to burn in the fire and of course behind him you have Mr. Webster who's a righteous lawyer who is going to try to save him from that plight of evil. So first off we'll take a look at some of their original photos. Now you'll notice they were shot on a green background so that we can use Photoshop's uh, selection tools to uh, remove the backgrounds and isolate the characters. If I try to delete the background, let me take my polygon lasso tool. I click anchor, anchor, anchor every time I click and go back to my starting point. If I hit delete, it won't do much. And the reason for that is because the background is locked. So let's double click on this lock, click OK. And now when we hit delete, you'll notice that this checkerboard appears in the background. The, this checkerboard pattern stands for invisibility, which is otherwise known or formerly known as an alpha layer. Now let me deselect what has been selected. Paramount. Photoshop really is uh, a lot about good selection, and that's why the first few tools are selection tools, and that's why those tools have their very own menu. Now let's try our magic wand. Now the way a magic wand works is it casts a net out over a range of colors. So, for example, let's say my net is very small. I, choose, I put the tolerance at 1. If I click here, you'll notice that it does not select a very large range. Let me do Command-D to deselect. That's the shortcut from the Select menu, deselect. Now this time, let me increase the tolerance to 32 you'll notice it grabs a much wider range of colors. So the first green I clicked on plus 32 shades thereafter are all captured. Now if I were to click over here, I lose the original capture that I just made. Now if I want to add two selections as I'm going along, what I can do is go to the Magic Wands property bar and choose the Add to Selection button. And you'll notice there's a little plus sign beside the magic wand now. And when I click in other areas of green, it slowly isolates and grabs all the green around our character. Now let's see how well that's done. A bit at the top of the head. The feet may not work too well. So let's just start first off with the background and we'll do the feed afterwards. So if I hit delete, there we go. We've isolated, we've gotten rid of the green. Now in this case, because there's a lot of uh, changes in the density of the green and, and the darkness, the magic wand may not be the ideal tool at this stage. We can switch over to the polygon lasso tool. Now let me do command D to deselect and let's zoom in here and we can slowly click around the specific pattern that we want to get rid of. And I'm just going to fast forward so you can see what this is going to look like. Okay, so fast forwarding through this whole process, we can see that the background has now been cut out. Now right now you can't see if there's a messy edge here because Basically, it's got that checkered background, but if you want to do a quick check, we're going to add a new layer. We'll call this um, black, let's say. I'm going to fill that layer with an odd color, like a dark red. Now let me take my paint bucket over here and fill it. Now you notice that the entire layer fills with red and we can't see our man anymore. That's because this layer is covering. It's on top of the man which is below. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag this layer beneath it. So 
so now he's on top. Now if we come in closely, you'll notice that, see there's a bit of some green edging around here. And you're going to want to get rid of that because when you're doing your final poster, you're going to want some clean edges. So there's one of two ways to do this. You can choose an eraser tool with a feathered brush. Whoops, I accidentally clicked on the red layer there. Let me edit undo. If I want to work on Mr. Stone, I have to click on his layer. And now I'm going to shrink my brush using the two bracket keys to the right of your letter P, the open and close brackets, you can use that as a shortcut to shrink your brush. Now here's one way to get rid of those edges. Now you notice with a feathered brush, it kind of softens the edge. Another way to do it is to take your magic wand again, select around the outer perimeter of your uh, character, and then go to select, modify, feather, and choose a feather range of about three. That means a softening. And then when you hit the delete key, watch closely here, I'm going to zoom in so you can see this. As you hit the delete key, look over the right shoulder. You'll notice that it slowly chews away and softens the edges. So that's a really quick way of doing the entire character, or cleaning up the entire character in one shot. Now I can get rid of the red background there. I don't need it anymore. Let's drag it to the trash. And now I have my first character done. So all of the objects or elements that you intend to bring into your poster, you want to clean them up like this first. Now, once you've done that, you can actually start your canvas, your actual poster. So to do this, you're going to go to File, New, and this is like creating a brand new sheet. You're going to specify the size. We're going to put it in inches, and the size in this case is going to be 22 width by 26 inches height, and we will make it 200 pixels per inch. And it will be in RGB color mode. We click OK. There we go. It is very important that you create a brand new canvas to start off with. So we're starting off with, with a very high resolution image here. And then going back to our character, for example, let's snap this tab off. If I wanted to bring him over into my poster canvas, let me switch tools, I simply have to grab this layer and drag it over here. And there we go. And make sure you name your layers. Call this Mr. Stone. There we go. Now, I'm going to fast forward here. And we're going to jump to the actual poster with all the elements in it. And I'm going to turn them on and off so we can see how certain things were done. So let's turn all of these layers off. Okay, so first off, there's the background right here, the very bottom layer. And in this case, the student chose to use a gradient with two colors. Now, if you go to your paint bucket tool over here, if you hold down on your paint bucket, you notice there's a little arrow beside the tool. That means there's a secondary tool underneath it. So if you switch, if you hold your, your cursor down, you will get a flyout menu that will show you which other tools are available. In this case, I'm going to choose the gradient. Now the colors here ran from red to black. And so taking your gradient tool, you can simply drag. You want the red and black to go in a smooth transition, or if you make a short line, a quick transition. I don't want to ruin what the student already did, so I'm going to go to my history over here, and I'm going to go back to the original image. So I backed up four steps in my history. The next step. Let's go back over here to this fire. This is one of the original images of fire. I'm going to move this over here. We take our magic wand, we click on the black, hit delete. Okay. Let's deselect Command D. Let me select all of this layer of fire. Let me copy it and let me paste it. And let's put that over here. Now how do we blend this? You could see that this has a hard edge to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my eraser tool with, let me blow it up, 
a large feathered edge. Remember, we want a feathered, not a hard edged eraser, but a feathered eraser. And watch this as I pass the eraser over. The feathered end edge allows a gradual blending between the two images. Okay, now what I'll do now is, now that I've got these two uh, layers of fire blended, I'm going to select one, hold the shift key, select the other, and then I'm going to click on this little chain link over here. That means these two layers are linked. So if I move it around, they move together. Now we have the layer in, in, in the foreground. It's above all these other characters. Let's put our lawyer, Mr. Webster, in the background. Now why is he see-through? Well, that's because if I click on his layer, you'll notice that the opacity is at 38%. If I drag the opacity up to 100%, the effect is not quite as good. So bringing him back down to 38 percent he's kind of like a, a a ghostly spirit watching from the background and now next we're going to bring in the devil now a particular effect was applied here some color was then later added to the tie and a bit of skin color and you notice some red was put in the eyes there's a lot of work that went into this which it would take us about a half hour to get into uh, within the scope of this video. Uh, but you can play around with that. You can play around with your uh, your curves, your levels, your brightness contrast, your view and saturation. Those are all effective tools. Now let's go back and let's take Mr. Stone and let's drop him into this poster. Now in this case you'll notice, let me turn on the one that was done here. You'll notice he's in black and white. So how do we get our character over here, the one that we just cleaned up in black and white? Well what we can do is we go to image adjust desaturate and then we can go to edit transform scale and holding the shift key so we get a symmetrical scale we click down on the corner anchor and we start scaling him down. And we hit enter. Now if I zoom in here, you'll notice that there was a lot of other types of effects put into the the clothes and the fabric and that. However, she didn't do it to his face. So what you would have to do is basically take your polygon lasso tool and just select his body. Now let me zoom out here. I'm doing command minus sign. Command minus and command plus to zoom in and zoom out of an object. There we go. So now just his body selected. So if I were to add a filter, like I'm not sure what this would do, maybe colored pencil or something like that, you get different effects that you can add. Okay, so let me turn my character off and stick with hers. Now next she added some strings, which are just simply some drawn lines. And a couple of wood sticks for the puppeteers controlling and the hand which was the arm was cut off so that the hand could fit around the puppeteers um, strings and wooden control sticks. Now finally we have the title but she kept all of her text layers together. So you have Daniel Webster, we turn that on down here. Written by, the date. You notice she, you can take your move tool and at any time move any of these layers. And the graphic artist, which is down here in the lower left corner. And the cast and crew. Now once you're done, you save your poster as a PSD and then you're also going to save a second version, a JPEG version. You go save as and choose the JPEG format and there you have it. So that was a quick review of some basic effects that you can apply in creating your Photoshop poster.